I'm sure you would all want me to thank uh, Gracia Marcel most heartily for doing what we had hoped she would do, which was to inspire us and to open up a wider vision of migration. And she's given us just that framework that we need. In fact, she has brought together so many of the elements that are before us at any one time. We challenge you on the first day with a number of the items that were mentioned by Mrs. Marcel. We said we need to change the narrative from negative to positive. We said we're going to have to learn to manage social, cultural, religious, and ethnic diversity, or we would ultimately fail. So she brought all of that back in a very passionate and clear way. She's told us how toxic the issue is, how political it is, and therefore how difficult it's going to be to manage it, but we have to do it. Uh, you've com compellingly made the linkage between migration and development. Migrants are all about development. You've talked about migration in terms of human mobility, which is a modern term where migration no longer captures it. You've talked very much about the fact that south-south migration is every bit as large and important as south-north migration. You've talked to us about the importance of dealing with our diaspora in a way that they contribute both to home and host societies. You've talked to us very much about the problems of dealing with anti-migrant sentiment. You've talked to us about the need for courage and the quality of migration. You've talked to us about, most important perhaps, the priority of honoring and saving human life, which is what this is all about. So I want to thank you once again. I couldn't have asked for anything better than this. It's really fantastic what you've done. We're thrilled to have you here. And thank you very, very much. One more round of applause. For you. Thank you very much, uh, Excellency. Merci beaucoup. Uh, Excellencies, we've come to the end of the first voilà. part of this morning's uh, agenda. We'll move on straight to the second part, which is a high-level segment. And I'll ask uh, the panelists to come Yeah, I don't know what happened.
Good morning again, and thank you very much for your presence for this high-level panel on the post-2015 UN Development Agenda. Uh, I want to welcome you all to this segment, and I'm particularly happy to be able to introduce to you a panel of distinguished personalities from a number, we're going to look at this from a number of angles uh, on the question of development and migration. I think during the panel, we tried to do two things. First of all, we'll try to talk about how migration until now has figured in the post-2015 process in the debate, and secondly, how the discussions are likely to develop between now and the time that they are adopted in 2015. Uh, but before I present the panelists, let me just make a few very brief remarks about post-2015 and a little bit about what IOM has been trying to do at your request from last year's council. The, uh, the question of migration and its role in development, they figured in international discussion for a number of years, but as you know, they were totally absent from the Millennium Development Goal. There's no mention of anything including population displacement. In fact, the first time any reference was made to the problem of conflict and political instability and the displacement of people was in paragraph 47 of the 2010 Cancun UNFCCC meeting. So we're not doing very well on that, but we therefore have to work much harder to make sure that migration and development do feature in the post-2015 SDGs. So we're going to attempt to tackle contemporary challenges through partnerships from Global North and Global South. In the resolution 2070, of the Council, you ask us to continue to engage in the ongoing consultations on the post-2015 UN Development Agenda process, and we've been doing that. We've done it in kind of three ways. First of all, as you know from my presentation on Tuesday, we were and have been a member of the UN task team on post-2015. Secondly, we have collaborated closely within the Global Forum on Migration and development, as well as in the Global Migration Group. And thirdly, we have had IOM-specific activities, including meetings, publications, social media, lobbying, and piloting of projects. So the report that was presented by the Open Working Group to the UN General Assembly in September explicitly mentions migration and related issues in a number of areas, including education, gender equality, employment, inequalities, peaceful societies, and global partnerships. So we're moving forward, and my vision for IAM's engagement is going to be one driven by two considerations, alliteration again, accountability and advocacy. On accountability, we are prepared to set up a monitoring framework to track progress on migration-related targets targets in post-2015. As part of this, I want to engage all of you as council members to discuss the extent to which you as member states could support an effort on reporting baseline data on migration. We're going to propose such a discussion on this at the SCPF, the Standing Committee, in June 2015. Moreover, IOM is already fit for purpose, as they say, to implement the migration aspects of post-2015. We have an unmatched global footprint in 470 places around the world, in more than 150 countries. We have extensive expertise and operational capacity on migration and development throughout this very large field structure, where 97% of our people are deployed. We develop guidelines for engaging in the country teams, and concerning advocacy, our activities are not just technical. We know that the most successful 
successful Millennium Development Goals were those that were able to garner support from a broad range of participants. This was true for the plummeting of infant mortality rates, the plateauing of the AIDS epidemic, and reaching gender parity in relation to primary school enrollment. So we have to be vigilant and we have to have a focus. So with your support, we have been able to sensitize the broader development community about the importance of migration. So let me say finally that together with our partners, we will be launching a series of advocacy initiatives with civil society, the academic community, and the private sector designed to strengthen their engagement on this issue. We will use the International Dialogue on Migration as an important venue, and we want to collaborate with the Global Forum on Migration and Development and the GMG in this regard. I want to turn now to our panelists. We are uh, very pleased to be able to have Sir Peter Sutherland with us this morning, the Special Representative of the Secretary General uh, on International Migration and Development. He was unable to join us for a number of reasons, including fog at the Heathrow Airport. But I'm delighted, Peter, that you can be with us on video link. I know this has taken a lot of effort on your part to do this, but you're always faithful to us. We've had you here many times, and it's always an honor and a great pleasure to have you join us. Uh, we will then have words from our three other uh, participants, but let me start, if I may, uh, with you, Peter. 